use of the mosquito itself. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers that question to the disbelievers who say, Why, what, what does Allah want with this? Like a mosquito, or an analogy like a mosquito. Allah will say, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا By means of this, by means of analogies, Allah guides many, and Allah misguides many. You know, there is... The Prophet ﷺ, usually when he spoke, he would say something, he would start with something called خطبت الحاجة خطبت الحاجة which is basically some sort of a certain words to start his khutbah with like it's like a, a repeat he would repeat that in many times many times it is basically that's how it reads inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyi'ati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu this is still the end that's khutbah al-haja the prophet would start like his it's like a speech. At the beginning of a speech, that's how he would start it. In it, the Prophet says, مَن يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَن يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَذِيَ لَهُ Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And if I were to translate it literally, I would say, and whoever Allah misguides, no one can guide. I usually receive this question, by the way. Someone says, like, Okay, so you see, Allah guides certain people, and Allah misguides other people. So it's Allah who guides and misguides, right? So why should people be punished if they are misguided? Because Allah misguides them. There is something missing here in this understanding. Again, this is just like this verse. Allah says, يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا Allah misguides many people by means of these parables. And Allah also guides many people by means of these analogies. So, again, we should not take this in away from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described as al-adl. He's just... Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةِ Allah does not do injustice, even if it's an atom's weight. There's no injustice from Allah. It must be justice from Allah. So this is how you have to understand Allah guides and Allah misguides. That means Allah guides those who deserve the guidance. And Allah misguides those who don't deserve the guidance. Who are they? The ones who sincerely seek the guidance, they are honest. That's the bottom line. They are sincere in their hearts to find the guidance and find the truth and follow it. These are the ones Allah will guide. And the ones that Allah misguides are the ones who in their heart reject the truth. They're not sincere. They're not sincere in their hearts. That's the bottom line. So Allah does not guide and misguide randomly. No, Allah guides the ones who deserve. And Allah misguides the ones who deserve on that side. That's how Allah works. There's no injustice whatsoever. No injustice. وَمَا يُضِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah ends this verse with a clarification. And let me read the whole translation because I want to see how uh, the translator he, he uh, translated the meanings. Surely Allah does not shy away from using the parable of a mosquito or what is even smaller. As for the believers, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. And as for the disbelievers, they argue what does Allah mean by such a parable? Through this, He leaves many to stray and guides many, and He leaves none to stray except the rebellious. <coughs> so, who are the ones that Allah misguides and allows to go astray? Are the rebellious. Rebellious, they reject the faith. They reject the faith. And by the way, Faith is in our hearts. We said that previously. What, what, we, what are we born with? Anyone remembers? The younger ones. We're born with something, okay? And that's the truth. What is it? Fitra. Excellent. That's for you. First gift today. Give it to me. 
What's your name? Aisha. Aisha. Well done, Aisha. Mashallah. So, rebellious, when someone rejects the faith, they go against their fitrah, against their nature. So, by the way, in Islam, we're not, hey, we're not trying to get people out of who they are. Come and be like us, like be an Arab or be a Pakistani or Indian or Somali or Egyptian. No, no, that's not what Islam is. Islam is basically telling people, hey, be who you truly are. Be your creation, the very the very essence of your creation. Be true to your creation. That's really what Islam says, by the way. That's what Islam says. So Islam wants people to just be humans. Humans as Allah created them, the purest form of humanity. Islam is not trying to acculturalize people, get them to cross over and adopt another culture. No. Islam just tells them, be true to your fitrah. Truly, that's it. That's what Islam tells them. So the ones uh, are, who are misguided are the ones who are rebellious. Rebellious against what? They're rebellious against their nature, against, the, against their football. They're, they're not true to the human nature. They're not, they have abandoned it. They have given up on, on it. They have betrayed it. And thus they have betrayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah gives further clarification on those people who are the fasiqin, the rebellious ones. Who are they? الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض أولئك هم الخاسرون. These are like major archi archetypal descriptions of these people. So what are they? They those who violate Allah's covenant after it has been affirmed, break whatever ties Allah has ordered to be maintained and spread corruption in the land. It is they who are the true losers. So this is the description of the, of the rebellious. The first one is what? They are the ones who break or betray the covenant, the agreement with Allah after it has been affirmed. What is that agreement? So Allah is saying there's an agreement between him and them. Otherwise, how could they break it? Like, do I have an agreement with you? Did we? Do we have an agreement? Did we make an agreement? I'm talking to you, yes. Yeah? Do I have an agreement with you? What is it? Did we get together and agree on something? No. So I can't say, oh, you betrayed my agreement. Why? There's no agreement. But Allah is saying these people have betrayed the agreement of Allah. So what is the agreement? There's an agreement. There's an agreement. There is an agreement between us and Allah. What is it? The girls are getting all the gifts today. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure, but when they agree, I think like I create you, you obey me. Yes. 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 There is an agreement between us and Allah. And it happened, by the way, before we were born. Before we were born. And you might think that you, you now, you, you don't feel, you forgot, you forgot it. You forgot about that. But you feel it. You feel it, I'll, I'll show you now, I'll explain to you how you actually feel it. It's a different type of knowing. It's not like, oh, I remember speaking to you. I remember we got together at Tim Hortons, and we signed an agreement. I remember that. No, no, that's not how you remember it. It's a different type. This is a different type of thing, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ By the way, guys, this is our history as humans. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا Allah says, uh, Allah took from Adam, from the back of Adam, Allah took all of humans, all of his descendants, all of the progeny of Adam. Allah brought them. There's an hadith that sort of explains that. Allah brought 
all of the sons of Adam, all of them by the way, throughout the time, Allah brought them in the shape of the smallest creatures. وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ Allah spoke directly to all of us. أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Am I not your Lord? Did I not create you? Don't I deserve your worship? قَالُوا بَلَا They said, yes indeed. We said, all of us said, yes indeed. So that's the agreement between us. And that's part of the fitrah. We know it in the fitrah. You might say, I don't remember. I don't remember. Let me ask you a question. What do you think? What do you think of a person? Yes. Taking someone else's car and driving it without permission. Is that a good thing? No. Why? You stole it. Because it's not their car and they stole it. Because it's not their car and they stole it, right? Again. By the way, what is that? That's 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 part of our fitrah. We know what's right and what's wrong. You know, in English they call it what? Conscience. Conscience. What is it? In Arabic? Huh? No, 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 no. We call it, we have a name for it in Arabic. Conscience tells you, oh man, that's wrong. When you do something wrong, it, it actually gives you a hard time. You feel guilty, you feel bad about yourself. You can't sleep at night when you do something bad. What do we call it? 